Hi there, thanks for tuning in. It's been a while since I've done a Retro Gamer uh, flick through. As someone pointed out in the last one I did, I shouldn't really call these a review because I do write for the magazine and have done for several years, so it's not really fair to call it a review, but I'm still obviously allowed to do a look through, um, showing off the articles of the various writers and staff of Retro Gamer, um, of which this is another quality issue, as you can see from the cover. It's called Back to the 90s, this issue, and there's a big 14-page special all about 90s gaming, all different facets of 90s gaming, which uh, we'll have a look through shortly. So, here we go. Let's uh, dive in. Uh, this is the editor, Darren Jones, and he's announcing here that uh, it's been 200 issues since Retro Gamer was resurrected after live publishing. Its first publisher went, uh, went belly up uh, many, many years ago. So this is now the 200th issue uh, that Darren, I believe, has been in charge as well. So quite quite a, a, a um, landmark for Darren there. And there's the usual um, uh, sort of gallery of the people that are writing for the magazine or some of the people that are involved in the magazine. And the question that uh, they asked this, this month is, what game defined the 90s for you? So there's all sort of different answers here. Darren goes for Super Mario 64. Tim says Tekken 2, Nick um, rather uh, predictably goes for Sonic the Hedgehog and down here you've got me and I rather predictably go for Resident Evil um, and I'm currently playing as well Dead Space 2, I've actually completed it in the meantime but really enjoyed playing Dead Space 2 again and of course as many people said it's Resident Evil in space. So there you go, let's go past there and uh, contents pages, got to skip through a few things because there's quite a lot to get through. Uh, news stories, which always interesting, uh, as well as the Ian Lee and Paul Rose columns, always a, always an entertaining read, and a couple of other interviews with people that are sort of like involved in uh, in restoring um, 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 Lucas Art games by the look of it. Um, here we've got uh, the latest news from May two thousand and four. And uh, Nick t tells us about the Engage, which was a bit of a failure, but I think as with a lot of this tech, sometimes you need to have failures to get to the successes. And I remember seeing this in um, Special Reserve and thinking it looked really cool. It had Tomb Raider running on it, and I thought it looked a really cool uh, piece of kit, far out of my uh, price range at the time. Ultimately, of course, it didn't really take off, but as I say, sometimes you need these failures uh, to, to get your successes a bit later down the line. So a little retro revival. And then the big Back to the 90s uh, article. Uh, the interviews are uh, Paul Glancy, interviewees I should say, are Paul Glancy, uh, who's pre used to edit uh, CMVG, uh, Daily Eve Johnson, uh, Paul Monaghan, a friend of mine who hosts an excellent uh, podcast called uh, Maximum Power Up, which is uh, focusing mainly on uh, retro magazines, Violet Berlin, TV presenter, uh, and some uh, some gaming folk there, and a YouTuber. So, lots of cool 90s content, including all the machines you could buy uh, in the 90s. Uh, obviously, a huge breadth of machines. At the beginning of the uh, decade, you had the Spectrum and Commodore 64 still going, and by the end, you had the uh, you had the Dreamcast there, as well as the uh, Wanda Swan and Neo Geo Pocket as well. So, quite a, quite a big um, decade in terms of technical ad advancement. So lots more stuff about the uh, 90s, loads of stuff here, so if you're into the 90s that's a, it's a massive article to read. This was the bit that introduced, interested me most because I became a big PC gamer in the late 90s, mid late 90s, it was a really great, great era to be a, a PC gamer. Uh, if you think back then you've got, obviously Doom came out in the early 90s I suppose, but then you've got um, all those great build uh, FPSs such as uh, Duke Nukem and Shadow Warrior and Blood and then you've got the explosion of the strategy genre and also the RTS genre with games like Warcraft, Command and Conquer, Total Annihilation and for me the also the rise of the FPS with games such as Star Wars, Jedi Knight and, and all those sort of games so it really was a fantastic time to uh, to be a, a, PC, a PC gamer I think that. Onwards, subscription offer, a nice little controller there, another retro revival. Now this I really enjoyed, it's a um, bit of a departure from the 90s content with a bit of 80s content here, the making of BMX Simulator, which I can't believe we, uh, the magazine hasn't actually featured before, but it was the first game by Codemasters 
uh, and this is a very nice feature by David uh, Crooks about the uh, the making of BMX Simulator, which I remember having on my Spectrum, although it originated on the, uh, the Commodore 64. So a really nice looking game as well, I think, for the time. And of course it retailed on the 8 bits for just $1.99, so really good value for money as well. It will look back at the uh, Sun Visor Stroke Screen Guard for the Atari Lynx. Wow, that's cool. Uh, the Evolution of Pitfall, this is a feature by uh, my fellow freelancer Rory Milne, really nice look back at the um, at the series, Pitfall, famous Atari series, so lots of nice words there. Um, Desert Island Discs, uh, which uh, features Darren himself and uh, takes us through his uh, eight uh, games that he'd take to a, um, to a desert island. Funnily enough, there's not, Darren's a huge fan of shoot 'em ups not a huge amount of shoot 'em ups on there, actually. Uh, I suppose Dead Space Extraction is, Robotron certainly is, Thunder Force certainly is. So I would have expected a few more, but he's, maybe Darren's gone for a deliberate um, trying to get in as many genres as possible or different types of game. That's what I'd probably do if uh, I was in that article. The Making of Star Lord. Now, I've not heard about this game. Um, Richard is a long time uh, contributor to the magazine, hasn't been in it for a while, but. It's nice to see him back, and with a really interesting making of, I'd like to see more stuff like this, because, first of all, I've never heard of the game. It's I think it's a, an Amiga uh, and PC strategy game, and its origins are really interesting because it was developed by Maelstrom Games, uh, and it originally started off as, an, as, as a play-by-mail game, uh, which was a bit of a... Um, very 80s thing where you sent off uh, moves by mail and you you, you played uh, and you got a sort of maps and things back and you got interaction from the uh, the games master sort of like a um, a male version of Dungeons and Dragons really but it was it was it was a lot more than that and a lot of people got really into it in the 80s and then uh, when uh, Micronet started uh, I believe it, it suddenly got going again this game and uh, yeah eventually it, it was a standalone game as well for the Amiga and uh, PC and it's really interesting to read and it's nice to see as well that despite its obscurity the magazine's gone for a six page article really I mean, and I think it needs it because there's a lot of backstory Richard doesn't really even start talking about the the game itself the main game itself until the third or fourth page so it's I think it really needed six pages to breathe and uh, I'm glad that um, I'm glad that um, it got commissioned and that uh, we can finally see it the unconverted more arcade games that didn't make it home this is my feature on uh, Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday, which is a game I've been trying to get into the magazine for a long time. It's not really particularly well known, but it's a really ace sci-fi RPG. The Mega Drive wasn't renowned for its RPGs as much as the SNES, and it certainly wasn't renowned for its sci-fi RPGs. Um, so it was really nice to finally get this game into um, into the magazine. Uh, I've played the original Commodore 64 and... Uh, Amiga version, PC versions as well, and they're they're quite different to this Mega Drive game, which is which is a lot easier to get into. Although it's obviously uh, quite scaled down from those. So there you go. There's Buck Rogers, another retro revival, Contra Spirits, another really nice article uh, by Sarah Elsom or Sarah Elsom. Sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong. Uh, Clock Tower, the making of Clock Tower. So another famous uh, series. Uh, really enjoyed this series. Played some of the latter ones, but not uh, not the early ones. But it's a really good horror game series, so it's nice to see that in there. And another six pager as well, which is good. Bit of hardware. Uh, so you want to collect Mega Drive RPG. So lots of I like these collecting articles. I'd like to write one myself one day. Although I'm not sure what on because I'm not a big collector. But it's really nice to read about all the different games and how much uh, how much they're going to cost you should you decide to collect them. Ultimate Guide to Fighters Mega Mix, uh, which is by staffer Nick Thorpe. Another nice article. Another few pages. Future Classic 428 Shibuya Scramble. Never heard of this game, but uh, it was interesting to read about and see why they think it's going to be a future classic. History of Time Splitters, another famous series. Uh, lots of um, different games available uh, in Time Splitters. I remember playing it on the GameCube, I think. This is a nice little. History of article by Adam Barnes. Lots and lots of pages on that. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection, retro-inspired this is, which is about the um, the new um, Ghosts and Goblins game. 
I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with Ghosts and Goblins, like a lot of people, I suppose. I loved it on the Specky, but it's so bloody hard. I was almost swore, swore a bit worse there. Um, and the arcade game's amazing as well, but I remember shoving 10p after 10p into the arcade game and not being able to get past that first level. Uh, but obviously it's a classic still, um, even if it's a bit frustrating. A review of Capcom Arcade Stadium, which gets 83%. Plus some other reviews. There's still no homebrew section because um, the chap that writes it is unfortunately still ill. But I'm hoping that uh, he'll be back soon or he'll be out of hospital at least and on the mend. The hot topic is about uh, collecting. Uh, this is Collector's Corner. This is written by me as well. Uh, and I interviewed this, uh, this lady from Sweden called Ellen Eriksson about her love for, um, for for SNES RPGs. Now, a couple of things um, led me to interviewing uh, Ellen for Collector's Corner. I always try and go when I do Collector's Corner for uh, the extra stories because um, at the end of the day, we all there are a lot of people out there that have got deep pockets and can just buy loads of games off eBay. I don't think that's a particularly interesting... It may be towards the start when we were doing Collector's Corner, but I think these days, you know, it, the Collector's Corner have to have a, a different edge or an angle to them because, there's a, as I say, there's a lot of people out there on um, on Twitter and Instagram in particular that obviously have deep pockets and just hoover up loads of games. And whilst these collections are quite impressive, what impresses me more is people that have got the uh, dedicated stories or behind the games. And what, what led me to Ellen was that um, despite her young age, she uh, she loves the SNES. And uh, I think she was, when the SNES was still going uh, in the mid-90s, she hadn't even been born. So it was interesting to see hear her story about um, the, the, the SNES games that she's gone back and, uh, and liked so much, especially uh, Terra Enigma. And also about how the um, the retro gaming scene today has uh, has helped her out of uh, some issues uh, she had when she was younger. Hence the uh, the title, the retro rest restorative. So yeah, that was a, that was a nice one to do. Double the fun, which is my ret retro life, which is about um, which is particular shared passions from particular members of the team. A mailbag, still getting some letters in. And uh, a look at next month, which has an ultimate guide to Miner 2049er, which is, of course, the game that inspires one of my favourite games, Manic Miner. And there's a few other little bits and pieces extras coming next month, which looks really good. So there you go. There's the latest issue of Retro Gamer. Thanks for watching, uh, and uh, I'll post another video soon. Cheers. Bye.